Hello, Sunnyside. How you doing? I know you've heard a lot about what's going on with the COVID protocols and the opening of the churches and, and things like that. And this morning, I wanted uh, you to get a better clarification of what that means. So I'm going to have Dominique come and explain all of that for you and hope you get excited about us moving closer towards a new and exciting time in the Lord. And also, we have a new kind of service for this Easter so I hope you sit back and enjoy. You'll see some new faces doing some new things. And that's going to be our model for the year. Just doing it new. Amen. Here's Dominique. Good morning, Sunnyside. It's been a while, but I'm here with some coronavirus updates. So as you know, things are moving pretty quickly towards reopening. So I wanted to clarify the mandates that we have received from the state and will need to follow. So I have 10 important outlines uh, to go through. The, the first one will be beginning April 5th, which is tomorrow on Monday, churches can reopen, but they can reopen with restrictions, which I will go over right after this. If any of these restrictions are um, violated, there will be a $20,000 fine that the church must pay. So we are going to be sure that we enforce all of these restrictions and not pay this fine. So churches can open with 50% occupancy if you are going to be indoors. If you um, are going to have Bible study and youth, they can also meet. So our youth camp, um, which we were doing outdoors across the street, will still continue doing that. And Bible study can take place across the street as well, too. Outdoor worship and activities are recommended and preferred. We will need to still remain six feet apart unless you are within the same family unit. Masks are required. We will need to get a tally of who's been vaccinated and who has not. There is no singing allowed indoors. Singing is only allowed outdoors and with a mask. And to enter the facility inside or outside, you must be checked by the temperature checked, sign in and sanitize properly. With all of these restrictions in place, we want to make sure that we don't move too fast and we have everything in order to follow all the guidelines and keep track of everyone. So starting the second week of April, the second Sunday of April, we will start with outdoor services across the street at the community center. From there, we will make sure we have enough people in place, enough helpers to do the temperature checks, sanitize, and get a tally of where we are regarding vaccinations and everything. We will still be required to stay six feet apart and wear masks for this um, opening in the next couple of weeks. From there, we will continue to monitor all the guidelines and then hopefully move closer to back to what we know as to be regular. If you have any questions or need any information, you can go to the L.A. County Department of Public Health. Their number is 213-240-8144. And their email is media at ph.lacounty.gov. Feel free to also uh, reach out to us with any questions, and we look forward to hopefully seeing you all soon. Thank you. Every step I take, I take in you. You're my way, Jesus, every step I take, I take in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You're my way, Jesus, every step I take, I take in you. Ooh, yeah, la, 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 every room I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus, every step I take, I take in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus, every step I take, I take in you. Ooh, yeah, and la, 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 Every room I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus, every step I take, I take in you. 
Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every step I take, I take in you. Ooh, yeah. La, 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 la. Good afternoon, my Sunnyside family. Today is Friday, the 19th of March, and I'm feeling good, looking good, and going to be good. God has been so good to me. He brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. I'm going to have surgery with a stent put up towards my heart to make sure everything can be done right because I'm having heart problems at this time. I think about my church and all my church members and friends and everyone from Sunnyside. I always call, leave a little message just to see how everybody is doing. I know we done lost a lot of people, but God is good. He's going to take care of all of us. And when we get together to come back at Sunnyside, we're going to be saying, Hallelujah! We home. We're free at last. We're free at last. Thank God Almighty, we can walk back in Sunnyside free at last. So everyone, have a great day. Take care. Pray for your pastor. Pray for everyone at Sunnyside. Pray for the sick and the shut in, the homeless. Just pray. That's the only thing that we have going is prayer. So whatever happened last year up to today, leave it behind. And let's start a brand new, brand new day. Okay? So, as I say all the time, holla!
Good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. So in Mark 16, 1 through 8, we learned about the story of the three women who went to the tomb searching for Jesus to find that the rock in front of the tomb had already been rolled away and an angel was standing there and told them to go back to tell the disciples that Jesus would meet him or meet them ahead in Galilee. So this story shows that, number one, that they're looking for Jesus. And I find in life, we're often looking for Jesus as well. It can be pertaining help with raising your kids, finding a new career or job, whether to get the vaccine or not to get the vaccine, and just navigating our way through a pandemic. All through life, we're looking for Jesus. And what reminded me of what we tend to do is we tend to next say, how can I help the issue? So when the women were appro approaching the tomb, they asked, how are we going to roll the stone away? Just to find that the angel had already rolled the stone away. So I feel in life, we often try to figure out how we can solve the problems on our own. And it often leads to worrying versus trusting God. So we waste our time worrying versus spending our time enjoying the trust that God has given us. So I have an example of this uh, just recently. Um, as you all know, I was uh, laid off during this pandemic. And like most people, the EDD unemployment has had some issues. So I've been one of those victims as well. So I've been trying to call and reach them. And it's been um, several months now. So I was getting kind of low on the funds. And so I was starting to question, what am I going to do? So I did my part, my due diligence, you know, speaking with the kids and everything. They taught me how to go on YouTube and see these hacks of what numbers to call, when to call and everything. But it was a thin line between doing my part and trusting God and it becoming a worrying that took over all day. So I committed to calling each day in the morning at the time they said just enough times where I felt like it was enough to try but not to get me stressed out. So I did this Monday. I didn't get through Tuesday. I didn't get through Wednesday. I finally got through. Thank God. And they got my account all settled. But then the guy told me, well, you know, your account is about to expire. So I will call again next week so that we can renew it. And of course, I'm frustrated because I don't want to have to call back again. So I say, do you have a secret passcode or something where I could jump the line? And of course, he says, no, you just need to call back and speak to a representative. And I'm like, well, I did it online before. Why can't I do it online again? And he said, I just suggest you calling in to do it. So I'm frustrated because that created more work for me as I felt. Now, going back to the story, when the three women approached the tomb, the angel gave them an instruction and they were terrified and ran away with fear and they didn't do what he said. So that reminds me that sometimes when we are looking for Jesus, we question what he is going to do, try to do things ourselves. But even then, when we get an answer, we either don't like what we have to do next. We get scared of what we have to do next. Don't feel like it, get frustrated or it's too much work to do what we have to do next, even though we know this is something that we should be doing while following or looking for Jesus. So for me personally, going back to my EDD story, I honestly was like, I'm just going to do it online because I've done it online before. But then I really thought about it. And I said, there must be a reason why he told me to call. So I did my same plan. I was like, I'll just call in the mornings. I'll give myself a week. Monday, I didn't get through. Tuesday, I got through really quickly and they were able to walk me through the process over the phone. And um, I had to find a lot of information that I actually didn't even know answers to half the stuff. And she worked with me and then I actually got to put her ho on hold for a little bit, which I did kind of selfishly enjoy putting EDD on hold because they always put me on hold. But anyway, we got the paperwork sorted out and I saw that my claim is being processed. Now, I don't know what would have happened if I didn't call and I would have did it online. But I know that there was an instruction given to me that seemed to have my best interest at heart. And I feel sometimes we get instructions from our prayers, from God, from just it could come from anyone like mine came from the EDD office. But we are able to get answers and get solutions from what we're looking for. But it's up to us to choose if we want to do it or if we don't want to do it. 
because sometimes it does involve more work and it's not fun and it is frustrating. But that is so the process that comes with following Christ and being a true believer, because in the end, it'll always be for our benefit. So I leave you with three R's. So three R's I know are usually something different, but mine are going to be reflect, relax and rejoice. Reflect on what Jesus has already done for you. Relax in knowing that he has it taken care of. You don't need to try to come up with solutions on your own and rejoice in the fact and knowing that you can trust him instead of worrying. And on this Resurrection Sunday, I just want us all to rise to the occasion of trusting and waiting for him and following his instruction for what he gives for our life. And don't be afraid to do what he tells us to do and don't get weary in doing your work for the Lord. Thank you and have a great Sunday.
morning. I'm Deacon Glover, and on this Easter service, I have an opportunity to share a little bit about what Easter means to me and what Christ means to me. So I have a scripture here uh, from the book of John, uh, uh, John 20, starting from the 24th verse, that kind of reminds myself of how I didn't believe what was going on. And it was talking about Thomas, which is actually a disciple who did not believe. So one of the 12 disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, like many of us, I won't believe it unless I see the nails and wounds in his hands and put my finger in them in the place where the wound was on his side. So eight days later, the disciples was together again. And at this time, Thomas was with them. Now the doors was locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. And he said, peace be with you. Okay. Then he said to Thomas, like he's saying to us today, he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound on my side. So don't be, faith, don't be faithless, don't have any doubt, and believe. And my Lord, my God, Thomas, Thomas said, then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Now, I have not seen the face of God in my lifetime. I've, I've seen him in dreams and illuminations, but in a sense of where we are today, we need to see the Lord and understand. Because there's a shifting of what's going on in the world today, and we all are witnessing it today. We all see what's going on. We see the misinformation, the disinformation. We see in people and other things rise that's not even supposed to be a part of the gospel or a part of our faith. Just like God died on that cross, just like Jesus died on that cross, we have to die on a daily basis and wake up and fix what was lost yesterday and do what we're supposed to do and what he's calling us to do today. So you telling me when I turn 50, I'm going to be in the community that I'm trying to get out of and I'm going to come back and I'm going to do God's work and, and, and do God's will at the age of 50. Now think about it. As a 50-year-old man who grew up in a community with Crack, drugs, AIDS, gang banging, murder rate, all of these things and all of these strongholds and all of these traps that they put us in. You mean to tell me I'm going to live to be 50? I would have questioned that. But if they, talk, if they talk to me and pray for me and put it in my spirit, I'm sure I would have believed it to a certain magnitude. I would have believed it, not all the way through, but I would have had some type of belief. I'm going to use your life as an example. Now I know all of you that's watching this today was at a time in your life that you didn't you had doubt that you wouldn't make it to where you are today you had doubt that you wasn't going to finish high school you had doubt that you wasn't going to graduate from college you had a little doubt that you wasn't going to get the good job and get the home and get the mortgage and get the wife you had a little doubt but you believe now that you know what's next now that you know what's next, just like when Jesus came to Thomas and had to come in the presence and, and show him the nail holes in his hands and show him the nail holes in his side so Thomas could believe. So this is what he's doing to us. And this is what Resurrection Sunday means to me. If you knew the truth, maybe we'll act a little different. Maybe we'll, 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 we'll be like Thomas and say, that's a sign and wonder. So now that I know I can move forward because we didn't believe it. But since it's in the word of God. That changes the game. Now that we know that the name, that that's a name above every name, that every knee shall bow, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And now that we know that he was crucified with confirmation. Now that we know he did die and, and, and gave us a savior. So anything that we've done in the past that we can actually pray and be forgiven. Because as men and as women, we have to forgive our neighbor because God will forgive our neighbors. And just like my pastor always tells me, he shook those Ten Commandments down to two. First of all, love your God with your heart, mind, and your soul. And secondly, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But we cannot love our neighbor unless we love ourselves. And if we have no self-love, 
then that's a suicidal mission. Just like you would not let a suicidal person drive you to the mountains to Big Bear. You would not let a suicidal person drive you across country because they're suicidal. Suicidal persons and people will kill themselves and put you in the mix and kill you just because they don't love themselves. So now we have to dig deep in our heart, minds, and our soul. We have to proclaim who God is, and we have to get right with God, because if we're not right with God, we need to get out the way. We are the light. But with God on our side, God within us, and us living on that whole nother plane, this is time for us to proclaim who we are. It's time to get to that next level, time to turn that light on so bright that it's, it's, it's attractive to those who don't know God because a lot of them don't even understand. Because if you look at what's going on today, they close the doors and shut the churches down and we got a whole lost generation out there that don't even want to talk about Jesus because they don't believe that he existed. But for those who believe that he exists even unto today, we have to stand steadfast and we have to be the leaders of this world and we have to do things differently because we don't want to raise uh, Babylonians. We don't want to create another uh, a Sodom and Gomorrah situation. We don't want to hide in the wilderness for 40 years. It's time for us to build. It's time for us to grow and to be the kings and the queens and the gods of this earth to the glory of God the Father and in the name of Jesus. Let the church say Amen.
Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us today on this Resurrection Sunday as we commemorate the life and the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we've had a few other speakers today who spoke to us about just what was was happening and transpiring from Jesus Christ being risen from the dead up until this point that I am about to discuss now where he had roamed the earth. He has been on the earth for about 40 days, and now he is getting ready to go now back into the heavens from which he came. I want to read to you today, starting from Acts chapter one. We're going to look at verse eight and we're going to go to the 11th verse. Acts 1, verse 8 through 11. And the word of God reads, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be a witness unto me in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and in the other, uttermost parts of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white clothing who said, men of Galilee, why do you stand glazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in a like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to just be here allowing us to just remember and understand what it is you've done for us, not only on the cross, but on that third day when you grows up out of the grave and you got up with all power in your hand, God. And we ask right now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, God, be acceptable in your sight, God, and let anything that comes out of my mouth be edifying to your people. It is in your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let everyone say amen. Today, if I had a topic, I would simply say, <laughs> Power hungry. We look at the world today and we understand that human behavior, that a lot of us as humans, we are we're, we're eager for for the approval and for the, the liking of a lot of individuals. And, and some of us even get to the point where where we crave different things. We crave things like food. We crave things like like uh, uh, sports. We crave things like a feeling and even to the point where some of us even crave power. And if you look at the word power in the definition, in the dictionary, it says power is the ability to act or produce an effect. It also goes and say that power can be defined as a legal or official authority. Someone such as a judge or someone such as a, a police officer or someone in some type of legal authority. It also goes to tell us that power is the possession of, of control, authority or influence. And lastly, it says that power can be measured by the might or the strength of an individual. Now, when you look at people, people tend to look at power in two different ways. One way is that power comes from the outside in, meaning power is dictated or predicated based on a position, whether it's a job, whether it's uh, in the church, whether it's in your family or in your neighborhood. Um, its power is predicated and predicted on your titles. A lot of people are title hungry to where they, they, they prefer a title over uh, the, the, the purpose of their life or they look for these titles and it makes and, and it defines who they are. We also look at uh, power as having uh, control or a belief of a supreme uh, being or supremacy over others. Now, we've encountered this throughout this past year and throughout the actual history of not just America, but through the history of the world where power has been something that 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 allows people to take control or try to control the minds and the bodies and the thoughts of individuals. And to the point where where people feel like they reign supreme or they're better than someone or they're beyond someone. So we look at power and understand that power can be a very, very slippery slope. And when you look at power from a fleshly way, you understand that power is, it has a lot of negative connotations that could come with it if you're living in your flesh. You know, people do so many wicked things in order to achieve power. You have people that do some 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 scheming and some scamming that that order allows them to achieve power. Some people do any and everything to to receive some type of financial gain, which in America or in the world, they say that money is power. But I'm here to tell you that before Jesus Christ went back into heaven, before he ascended and he disappeared behind that cloud, he told the people of Galilee, he told the men of Galilee, he told his disciples that it's not until you receive the Holy Spirit is that when you really, truly receive power. 
I want you to understand today that in the time that we're living in, in the world that we're living in now, the only way that we're going to navigate, the only way that we're going to safely travel, the only way that we're going to maneuver through this time that we're living in is that the power that's within us is guided and governed by the Holy Spirit. See, in our flesh, we can do a lot of things. God created us to be amazing beings. We're strong. We're, we're thoughtful. We're vigilant. We have ideas and things that that we can create because of the, the, the power of our mind. But sometimes we forget the key ingredient and that key ingredient is the Holy Spirit. The key ingredient is that comforter that Jesus Christ told us that although I'm going to go away from you, I'm going to send you a comforter. So here it is in, in Acts, the first chapter, as he's about to depart away from the disciples, as he's about to leave the disciples with the aspirations and the hopes that the disciples will go ye therefore and teach all nations what it is that he taught them, the ways that he showed them how to live, the ways that he, he in, in, in embodied in the life of his walk on earth and that he showed his disciples exactly what to do. He's hoping that that power that they saw in Jesus Christ, because we got to understand that the disciples were were strong men. And the only way that they follow Jesus Christ is because of the power that Christ possessed in his walk on earth. Again, we said power is the, is the ability to act or produce an effect. So I know the disciples looked at Jesus when, when he was, uh, had that five loaves of bread and he had two fish or was it two fish or five loaves of bread? But nonetheless, we know that he had a little bit and he had about 5,000 people that was around him. So he took that little bit and his ability to act and to feed the masses, let the disciples know that this man is powerful. Or I can even think when when he went to his friend Lazarus as his friend Lazarus has been dead for three days and his disciples are traveling back to to see Lazarus. And they say, well, God, he, he's dead now. Why are we going back now? And I'm paraphrasing. And they saw when Christ got there after he wept, after he showed compassion for his friend, he said Lazarus and he called out with a loud voice. And when he called Lazarus, he rose up from the dead and all of that towels and those things that was wrapping him up in the tomb. It had to fall off all of those bonds that that you are living with now all of the 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 things that that are holding you down that when Christ speaks it has to fall off but here it is now the power the authority the influence is now going back to heaven and the disciples are looking now how are we going to achieve this power how can we maintain what it is that Jesus Christ did on this earth and Jesus reminded them the only way that you can receive power, the only way that you can navigate through this world, the only way that you can break those habits, the only way that you can you can do whatever it is you put your heart to. is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, as we come to a close, I want us to understand that. Although Christ left, he didn't leave us lonely. He didn't leave us alone. He didn't leave us by ourselves. He left us with a comforter. He left us with a spirit. He left us with something that can, that can help us walk this walk on this earth. He left us with something that can tell us, no, you shouldn't do that when we want to do that. He left us with something that can tell us, yes, when we got fear and we're afraid. He left us with a spirit that can stand up in us. And if we allow that spirit to work through us, we can walk this walk on this treacherous earth. We can talk amongst people when they don't believe who Jesus Christ is. We can live a life that's a light that's going to shine and show that Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit is real. So I don't know about you today, but I want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to walk knowing that I'm protected by the power. I want to walk knowing that I'm covered by the power. I want to walk knowing that at the end of the day, the way I move, the way I breathe, the way I think is all governed by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for not only coming to this earth to show us how to live. For not only being whipped and crucified for our sins. Not only being buried and going to defeat the enemy and defeat death. 
Not only did you get up and show us that you have all power before you left, you left us with a comforter. So we're grateful for that comforter. We're open to receive that comforter. We know that the only way that we can survive and see you is to live and allow that comforter to live with us. Church, I'm here to tell you that comforter is the Holy Spirit. That comforter is the Holy Ghost. That comforter is something that comes in and it changes you. It makes you new inside and out. It makes you not do the things that you used to do. It makes you not want to go the places that you used to go. It makes you walk around with a smile and eager to tell people that a change has come over my life. If you have not received the power of the Holy Ghost, if you have not received or even offered yourself to Christ, we give you that time right now to ask God to come into your heart, to ask Christ to settle in your life, to ask the Holy Spirit to guide you every single day with your actions, with your words, with your thoughts. For it is through that we will be able to live here on this earth. It is through the Holy Spirit we will be able to change our communities. It is through the Holy Spirit that we will be able to wake up one day and see Jesus. And he tells us, well done, that good and faithful servant. You may enter in. Church, I hope you enjoyed today's service. Hope something was said that penetrates your heart and that settles in your spirit. I hope you enjoy your family today as you commemorate and remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I hope that you always know that if you're power hungry, if you need a little power in your life, that is through the Holy Spirit that we receive our power. May God bless you. May you go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen.
worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 That is. I don't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. That is who you are. 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 That is who you Hello everyone. We're here today on this Easter Sunday to celebrate what Easter is all about. And I can't start without quoting the scripture from John the 14th chapter. And I don't know, I think Jesus might have known about COVID and money problems and government problems and racism and all kinds of other situations that we live in our lives. But this is what he had to say. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. And if it wasn't so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you may be also. God has gone away to prepare a place for us. But he said, the night that Jesus was betrayed, and he knew that that would be the last night for him on this earth. He said, I want to have supper, the Passover supper. He said unto his disciples as they were sitting around the table, he says, this bread represents my body, which I'm going to give for you as the Lamb of God. I do this so you don't have to do it. I die for you. And the Bible said after he had given thanks and blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, each one. And he said, take, eat, for this is me, 
dying for you. Take ye and eat all of it, for this is my body. And the scripture says in the same manner, he took the cup. And he said, this is my blood shed for you. This blood can wash away all your sins. This blood is why I came, so that you don't have to shed your blood. For the wages of sin are death. But I give you the gift of life, my blood and eternal life. And having said that, he blessed the cup and gave thanks and said, take, drink ye my blood shed for you. Christ's body, Christ's blood. When we accept Christ, we have eternal life. And his blood washes away all of our sins. Past, present, and those to come. For in him we live in victory. For he also said that night, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it's in Jesus' name, I give you blessing, God's blessing, and God's prayer and keep. In the name of Jesus, amen.
hope like no other and it reaches me you are my hope yes you are hope like no other a hope like no other and it reaches me cause in A strength like no other and it reaches me you are my hope a hope like no other a hope like no other and it reaches me you are my strength, strength like no other, a strength like no other, and it reaches me, and it reaches me, and it reaches me. God, you're an awesome God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are my strength.